This weekend I'm making preparations in the garden for the cold weather that has been forecast here. There's a chance of snow which I'm really excited about in about a week. Um, it's not snowed since I've moved here so uh, that would be a big adventure. Obviously I'm hoping, you know, a few inches of snow so it looks pretty not six foot snow drifts but the temperatures are falling it's early december and that is totally normal and a lot of the mornings now are frosty so although many of the vegetables here will withstand snow and cold winter temperatures such as the winter brassicas and the parsnips and the leeks i'm making sure that we have some of them in the house just in case we get really, really cold days or snowy weather. There's nothing worse really in the winter than looking out over your garden, which is full of good things to eat and you can't get at any of them because the ground's frozen solid. I'm bringing in things that really aren't great standing over winter, such as the celeriac, which can get frosted and then it rots. Also, that's quite a big risk of being munched by rodents. And I live in a very rural area and we have all kinds of little furry nibblers living here. The um, beetroot, I'm harvesting quite a bit to use in the kitchen, but some of it will be absolutely fine over winter under some protection i usually use a double layer of horticultural fleece um, i've done this even through the beast from the east it works really well the beetroots stay absolutely fine but they are a risk of little nibbly rodents so if that's a big problem where you are it's actually better to harvest them all now we have the rare sight of a no-dig gardener with a spade uh, because that's the only way of getting parsnips out for me. Some people can push them down, twist and pull them out, but it doesn't work. I have to slide the spade in the ground near the parsnips, wiggle and then harvest the parsnip that way. I'm pleased with the celeriac harvest, especially considering it's been a pretty dry year and celeriac is very thirsty. Some of them are a really good size and some are a bit small. I'll use the small ones first. You can leave celeriac outside all winter with a deep mulch, such as straw or hay. Um, but because of the rodent risk here, I'm not going to do that. And also I'm on a hill and so deep mulches like hay or straw would most likely just blow away during the winter. Usually after harvesting celeriac, which as you can see by the disturbed soil is a pretty diggy job, um, usually I would then mulch it with about a centimetre or so of compost, but I don't have enough compost here this year because most of the compost that I've made and that I have, I'm using to make some more beds in the garden. And so this bed is going to be mulched instead with the celeriac leaves, which will help protect it for the winter. Mostly it will get broken down and then in the spring I can rake off any debris that I don't want to have on the bed. The advantage of this mulch is it's free and it helps to protect the soil from the worst of the wintry weather and as it breaks down, it's also feeding the soil life and it will create a lovely foraging habitat for all kinds of wildlife to come looking for their dinner on a cold winter's day. The disadvantage is that it is going to create a slug habitat as well, which shouldn't be too much of an issue over the winter time. But if it's a still a thick layer in the spring, that will be sluggy. So... If it is like that, that's why I'm going to remove it and put any remaining leaves in the compost heap because obviously I don't want a slug habitat where I'm going to be planting. I'm doing a similar thing here where I'm harvesting the hearting radicchio. This one I'm not harvesting 
you can see it's bolted and they have most beautiful flowers so perhaps that will flower in the spring perhaps it will get killed by the winter i just don't know here I've got the parsnip harvest and this row wasn't thinned out during the summer and you can tell by the rather eccentric growth of some of these parsnips. So it's nothing to do with the actual soil conditions. It's because I didn't thin them out and they all grew too close together and kind of twirled around. In the beds where I did thin them out, they've been coming out um, sort of parsnip shaped rather than eccentric but most of them are fine and I think it's really important to show that not everybody's parsnips are perfect but they're all still perfectly edible. Now the reason I didn't thin this row out is when it was time to thin it out um, life was just too busy and then they got really big and then it was really hot weather and you can get a skin condition called phytophotodermatitis from parsnips and I react really badly to it. It's a horrible blistering, it's very painful, it can scar. So there was no way I was going to thin out parsnips in really sunny weather which triggers phytophotodermatitis. Um, I'd rather have slightly strange wiggly ones than blistered arms and hands. I've harvested radicchio, beetroot, golden beetroot, turnips, parsnips, celeriac, swede and swede leaves. These autumn variety of leeks which were multi-sown in modules which is why they're all different sizes. They're not a winter hardy variety. Uh, the rest of the leeks in the garden are but these ones need to come out now and some celery. The red celery I find hardier than the white celery. Um, usually the white celery sort of turns to mush in the cold weather but in the spring it does reshoot and then you get kind of an early crop before it bolts so i'm leaving the celery in the ground and it will either turn to mush or it won't this is the yakon in the orchard beds and it's been really hit by the frost which is exactly what it needs it's about time to harvest it now really sweet delicious crop stores well over winter and it's about time to harvest the ochre too. So I'll be doing that over the next few days. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult going outside on a day that looks a bit cold and gloomy, but it's brilliant once you're out there. And actually I'm quite grateful for all the little jobs that still need to be done in the garden because it gets me outside and once I'm in the garden and interacting with the soil. It just lifts the spirits and it's good exercise too. Apologies for not having mic for this um, video, but I actually forgot to charge it. So uh, it's just having to rely on the camera mic for this one, but I hope you can hear it okay.